Welcome to The Global Pulse, a short video series where our experts break down a trending topic in international business and why it matters to you. Hi there, this is clinical professor John Crocker at the University of Maryland College Park. My friends at the Center for Global Business asked me to record a brief video update on the ongoing energy crisis in Europe. It's August 2022, and I lived in Germany for about four and a half years or so in the late 1990s. And this is a beautiful time to be in Europe. The fall semester will start in a few weeks. Um, Oktoberfest shortly follows. When I lived there, we didn't have air conditioning like most Germans. And that's not because we couldn't afford it, but because you just didn't need it. Uh, it wasn't that hot and you know, the weather was just beautiful. So it seems a little odd to be talking about an ongoing energy crisis in Europe. But that's exactly what's going on and that's what European leaders are talking about right now. So last we spoke a year ago, uh, the problem was a supply chain problem primarily due to the opening of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline or the lack thereof and U.S. concerns that were the pipeline to open that German dependence on Russian natural gas would just get worse. Well, a lot's happened since then. In the last year, Russia has invaded Ukraine and the flow of natural gas through the original Nord Stream 1 pipeline has been severely restricted. In fact, just last month, the flow was cut to zero. Now, Russia explained at the time that they fully intended to comply with their contractual requirements. However, due to maintenance concerns, it was necessary to shut down the pipeline for about 10 days. A great deal of concern emerged as to whether or not the pipeline would ever be reopened. Supposedly, there was a turbine that needed to be serviced and that there was a Siemens turbine and needed to go to Canada in order to receive maintenance. Now, this is a little bit, a little bit circumspect because uh, there's many redundancies within the natural gas pipeline. A single turbine that needs maintenance is not going to require the, the pipeline to be shut down. Nevertheless, Russia maintains that the reason for the shutdown has to do with ongoing difficulties created by sanctions uh, headed by the United States and the European Union against the war in Ukraine. Whatever the case may be, on July 27th, Russia uh, reopened the pipeline and opened it at 40% of capacity, which was good. Although that lasted barely overnight and the pipeline has been reduced to 20% of its full capacity. Now, this level is really the minimum level that can flow through the pipeline any less than that, and there's insufficient pressure for the gas to actually flow. So this truly is the minimum at 20%. Now, why? Why is Russia constricting the flow of natural gas? They say that it's because of restrictions caused by the sanctions. European leaders, on the other hand, are concerned that um, Russia is attempting to hold the German economy essentially hostage. And the reason for that is that German reserves of natural gas right now are, according to various estimates, between 56 and 65 percent of what's needed in order to make it through the winter. At a flow rate of only 20 percent, the Germans will not be able to achieve the winter reserves that they will need. As a result, uh, voluntary uh, restrictions on uh, natural gas usage have been imposed across uh, most of German industry, but even so, uh, at a, maybe a 15% reduction, this won't be enough to secure enough gas uh, for the winter. What that means is that should the flow of gas be turned off completely, this will result in an immediate energy crisis throughout Germany. Uh, According to some estimates from Deutsche Bank, we could see a drop in uh, German GDP of between uh, five, maybe as high as 15 percent 
uh, as a result of that crisis and the loss of natural gas. Now, believe me, the, the Germans are doing everything they can uh, to avert that crisis, which includes uh, at least five offshore uh, liquid natural gas processing ships in order to take natural gas from, from other places, primarily the United States, but also gutter, in order to, to uh, compensate for the, the constraint of the natural gas. Nevertheless, uh, because of infrastructure limitations, you simply can't get enough natural gas in that way to prevent the crisis. So essentially, what President Vladimir Putin has done is put his finger on a button that allows him to trigger a uh, recession within Germany uh, at his whim as, as soon as uh, the winter heating season begins, which is typically in late October. So what happens if he does that? If he does that and uh, drops the flow of natural gas to zero and the German economy then faces recession, what they will likely do is purchase as much natural gas as they can on the spot market. And they will um, meet their capacity needs and perhaps temper that recession a little bit. But what that will also do is uh, cause catastrophic uh, loss of supply for natural gas throughout the rest of the world. And other countries who can't afford to outbid the Germans for natural gas, but are nevertheless dependent on that spot market, countries like, say, Pakistan, for example, and, and many others, they will also suffer an economic catastrophe as a result of the follow-on effects caused by this lack of flow. So essentially, um, the Russians are holding the German economy and with it, uh, the ramifications that would have for small countries like Pakistan and even larger trading partners like the United States at his economic mercy as he considers whether or not to attempt to punish the West for its support for Ukraine. And that, in a nutshell, is the ongoing European energy crisis. Thanks for listening.